Good afternoon, and welcome to the Labyrinth Society's Many Paths, Many Visions podcast with your host, Christiana Brinton. This series theme I call Labyrinth Tales for Sheltering in Place. And my guests and I will be exploring, exploring the many ways the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted the worldwide Labyrinth community, while also calling on us to use Labyrinths privately to foster creative care healing solutions during this lengthy quarantine phase. Joining me today is Sarah Nash. Um, she was, up until a week or so ago, the current uh, Labyrinth Society TLS Energy Keepers Chair. Um, and so the title of the session is Making Sacred Connections and Keeping Connected, the TLS Energy Keepers. And Sarah and I will be talking about the value that a strong circle of committed healers provides to its community when dealing with these uh, stressful and uncertain times. So there's a little bit of um, uh, FYI um, stuff. If you're joining us on the GoToMeeting session, on this GoToMeeting session, please keep your sound muted by making sure the microphone icon in the lower middle of the GoToMeeting control panel has a line through it. This icon and others will appear on your computer screen once you log in. And if you call by phone, you will not see this. You can unmute yourself and ask questions during the Q&A session at the end of the interview, and I will let you all know if anybody else is on when that happens. Find the GoToMeeting invitation posted on the Labyrinth Society Facebook page, the Facebook Global Group, and on TLS's website on the News Updates page and in the What's New column on the right-hand side. So, greetings, Sarah. Welcome to uh, Many Paths, Many Visions. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. This is kind of exciting, this is the first time. Well, I, I, even though you have actually um, segued over, moved laterally to another position on the board right now, you have um, a great deal of experience. It's been almost three years in this position. So um, we are going to continue in this uh, vein because I really thought that um, it was important for people to hear what le the energy keepers are how they and how they provide, especially right now, how they provide um, a service to the Labyrinth community and anybody who um, who knows about them. So everyone who listens to these podcasts likes to hear how my guests have found Labyrinths or how Labyrinths have found them. So uh, could you tell us a little bit, so how have your Labyrinths made a difference in your life and why did you decide to come on the board of directors of TLS? Well, okay, so the, I'm going to start with Labyrinths and how they found me and how I found them. Okay. Um, I was, oh gosh, in my 30s, and I was on my way to Alaska, and I stopped into a bookstore, and one of the women who was managing the bookstore, it was in Depot Bay, it was up by, uh, I lived in Depot Bay, and uh, this was in Lincoln, Oregon, and she, she and I became good friends, but she was just she said, do you know about Labyrinth? And I'm thinking to myself, you know, the David Bowie movie, Labyrinth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking mazes and these kinds of things. And, and she says, no, 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 a labyrinth. And she whips out a picture and, and this book, and it was one of Lauren Archer's books. And she said, labyrinth. And I was like, ooh, big deal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what's so exciting about it? So I, I began reading about them. And then it was as though they'd always been around me. I don't know how many people have that experience, but it's like the minute you, you look at a labyrinth, it's, like, it's sort of like the slug bug game when you're, when you're driving somewhere. And <laughs> they were everywhere. It was like I couldn't escape them. And it was, they, you know, but they were at churches and what have you. So it was my 33rd birthday. I walked the Grace Cathedral Labyrinth in San Francisco. I was living in Big Sur. My girlfriend and I drove up there. And by the way, you can never make a left turn in San Francisco ever. <laughs> it's just, just, you just can't do that. But honestly, I, as I walked it, I was thinking that something remarkable and, and amazing was going to happen because I, I prepared myself for almost three years for this event. And <laughs> nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. When I got to the middle, everything changed in my life. Everything. I, I did not want to leave the center. 
And I had this like bizarre thought in my head about, you know, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna camp out right here, uh, pop up a little tent, you know, have somebody bring. <laughs> Literally, I had this thing in my head. I'm never gonna leave the center. It was the safest, most beautiful place I'd ever been. And so that's where the energy keepers, I think, in my opinion, that's where we go. We go to the center. We gather in the center and, and we find safety and we link arms. And it's, it's the, my, the Maori had this beautiful ceremony where they just link um, arms. And I, I first saw it on Jonah from Tonga. It was a show that they had on CBS, I think. I don't know, I'll, we'll find out, <laughs> I'll take a look. But uh, yeah, it was just this moment of, this is where the energy is. This is where the healing energy is. This is where you feel supported. This is where everything comes up and spreads out. Everybody, you meet in the center and you walk out again. And you meet in the center and you walk out again. And now my labyrinth in my backyard that my husband and I built with the help of our daughter and, and a couple of friends, uh, it's when I have my clients walk it, it's happy endings and happy beginnings. Mm. Yeah, that's and we go, go ahead. Yeah, we can't assume that the universe acts like humans because it doesn't. Yeah, <laughs> and out of everything that I've ever learned from Gary Zukoff, that was the one that stuck with me. Mm. Yeah, we have similar. It's funny because I lived in Depot Bay, I lived in Depot Bay, and, no. and yeah, yeah, when I came, no. when I came from the east coast to the west coast. Um, I stayed in Arizona and then I ended up going further up into Canada and coming back. And I just sort of glommed onto the coastline there in Oregon because I'd been through Portland and I loved it, but I wanted to see the Oregon coast. And I just stayed there in this little funky place. And I, um, for a couple of months just, and I, I would, I would go to the, cause their cliffs are so high, but they have bump outs and you can drive yeah. right up to the, and the, and so you can really be out over the ocean. And um, I would just sing, I would sing love songs to the whales and the seals and they would come up and hang out and play. I felt like it was a, such a magical place there. Um, just oh being, God. just being there. But yeah, so I've been, I, I know the Depot Bay and, and, and Grace. So that's really cool. Um, and I love this idea of the center that, that, this is the place of healing, a safe container, which is what we say about the whole labyrinth. But I think you probably do. I think your experience really illustrates that you see that 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 energy in the center for sure. Especially when you're open, you know, you're supposed to be open in the center and receptive. So, and that's really the I think the most important part with regard to how energy works. Energy is one of those that it, we know that molecules react differently when they're being watched. I mean, that's that's just pure science. I, I, I don't know how many people have watched or seen what the bleep, but the element of, of just what is it when you focus on something? I mean, this isn't men who stare at goats and this isn't Yuri Geller's, you know, bending spoons. You know, what does it mean? to actually have the energy keepers in, in, um, in the capacity that we do. Because in a way, we are all energy keepers. Regardless of where we are in the spectrum of the labyrinth design, whether it's just a purely scientific architectural element, all the way to people having ceremonies in the middle and elevating, or elevating, <laughs> levitating. I don't know, has anybody actually levitated in the labyrinth? Probably. But um, the, being an energy keeper is committing to actually spending time, whether you do it daily or um, you know, at, a, at a specific time each week, where you, you literally focus on those who have asked to be and I, and I, and I, again, this is my analogy and my metaphor uh, to be in the center, 
Now, the reason that I was really excited to become, a, to go on board when I was asked to uh, step in, I think it was for Debbie. Mm -hmm. And she had to, uh, I think her personal life just did. These things happen, you know, our personal lives just like rise up like tsunamis and <laughs> life is what happens to us when we're busy making other plans. Yeah. And just stepping in and then it was for me because I have the White Light Express, which is my ministry. And I, I believe for, and for a while it was really the, the two, the White Light Express and being an energy keeper because I have my group called the Guardians of the Grid. And essentially, White Light Express started with, um, yeah, I'll pray for you if you pray for me. Well, there actually is no if. I mean, if somebody asks for prayer, then I do it. But uh, the Catholic Church has uh, the intercessors, um, those who pray. And, and I like to, uh, I think it was Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi said, prayer is not an idle woman and not some old woman's idle pastime. It's not a hobby. It's, it's 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 sincerely sitting and or walking in, in the labyrinth or in, and and in meditation, holding the image of healing, holding the image of that which it is that we are desiring. Uh, most of the time, when we get requests from the energy keepers, it, it is about physical healing. But there are times when people are asking for help uh, with moving. Uh, with with a job, uh, with uh, you know uh, selling their home, you know the the power of positive focused intention, and so that being my that was my uh, uh, oh birds I hear birds <laughs> that being my um, what a mantra the power of positive focused intention that was my statement. I, I just, I believed, and it was, and it continues to be really beneficial for the uh, energy keepers. Um, but I think it's also important that for me, one of the reasons why I'm, I'm moving over into communications and media is because I think that I, I might have uh, wanted to join hands with the white light express and the energy energy keepers a little bit too much and and it, i started thinking to myself you know there's got to be a better way to do this because the dalai lama okay he says may i become at all times both now and forever a protector for those without protection a guide for those who have lost their way a ship for those with oceans to cross a bridge for those with rivers to cross, a sanctuary for those in danger, a lamp for those without light, and a refuge for those who lack shelter, and a servant to all those in need. And I will continue to be that. But with the world of social media moving in the way it is, and, and many of the energy keepers being, uh, I, I would get a lot of energy keepers asking me where the um, uh, where the energy requests were, and so I thought to myself, you know, I, I, I that's why we we began with a an energy keeper page on Facebook, mm -hmm. and now we have a group, and I know that uh, that is going to grow exponentially as well. Mm -hmm. But I think. I wanted to step in. Um, no, I didn't. I don't think. I believe what happened is that I stepped in already holding on to the social media element of it and not realizing that most of the energy keepers in the past, they, they relied a lot on uh, just email and phone calls. And a lot of them were not, um, I, I, you know, change is difficult. So moving to the realm of social media was it was a challenge for a lot of them now i think i've got us into a really good place mm. so for the person taking over i think it's going to be much much easier for her mm. but i love it 
So, so let's, so I'm going to go back because you've said a lot of stuff and, and, and I want to pinpoint, I want to pinpoint a couple of things. So first of all, people don't know that the, the role of the TLS Energy Keepers has been around since the inception of this organization. It's been around for as long as the organization has. One of the founding members, Toby Evans, uh, really wasn't interested in the nuts and bolts of how, how to create an organization. She was just interested in energy exchange. And so she said, one of the things, I don't really care about how you, how you create this, or I'm paraphrasing, or how you do this, but I want some aspect of this to be about energy, to be about the energy of the labyrinth and holding space. So let's have a group called the Energy Keepers. And it's been a board position to this day. It continues to be a board position it is to this day. So I'm going to paraphrase what you said. So you talked about prayer, you talked about focused intention, and you talked about holding space. Are they all three the same or different aspects of a triune um, discipline that the energy keepers practice or, or what? I mean, or does do you, do you think question. one person does more in one than the other? Do ever, does everybody understand what it means to hold space? That's a, thank you for that. No, no, they don't. And actually uh, it's, it's, one of the areas that I've been working with, uh, Carmel Stabley. Mm -hmm. um, did I say her name? Stabley. Stabley. Uh -huh. yeah. Stabley. Yeah. The, the regional uh, representative uh, chair. She is. She had asked me, you know, can you kind of do something with regard to ritual? So I'm going to be doing something with her uh, in, in September for the regional reps, and I'm going to also that that'll be available. Um, for all, for everyone. But there's a difference between straight meditation uh, and prayer and, and just simple holding space. So I can use different meta, uh, metaphors, but if you imagine walking to a hospital lobby because someone you love or a friend of a friend is in the process of perhaps receiving emergency treatment or something. So you walk into the lobby and you find the person who say the wife or the husband of the person who is having a, a treatment. Maybe it is an emergency, maybe it's not, maybe it's planned. So you come in and, and you, you, you say, hi, how are you? Can I get you a cup of coffee? And, and you'll sit there and basically hold space for that person who wants to run screaming with their arms in the air, waving, you know, ah, ah. So it, it's sort of the, here, I'm, I'm going to sit with you because a burden shared is half a burden. And that way, if, if you know you need to make a phone call or if you have to go pick somebody else up, or you, it's basically doing that for someone in the, in the space of a virtual realm. And, and because I'm a visionary, it's, it's, I, I, my problem is that I was born thinking everybody was like me. <laughs> everybody could talk to angels and you know do all that you know crazy woo woo stuff but i the bottom line though is that in this virtual world that is what we do and and it's reaching out with a letter and saying hey it's it's the equivalent of can i get you a cup of coffee can i just sit here with you a really good example of that was my girlfriend right before i got on with you this morning a very dear friend of mine just popped in on Facebook Messenger, and she said that she was um, her her beloved fur baby was uh, transitioning, mm -hmm. and she said, Could you "Sit here with me for just a minute on Messenger." And I said, of course. Mm -hmm. And I asked Peter to go light a candle, and so then we move into the ritual part of it. It is moving into picking up something. And then not just holding space, but then following through with an action. And that's the ritual and the prayer part of it. And, and then that other element of just, perhaps just the meditation element of it, where you just sit quietly. And it's, it's not for or about, but it's, it's, it's um, no, I'm, I'm sorry. The, the other part is for and about when you're holding space and it, the metaphor of walking into the hospital lobby or the waiting room. And, and you know, it's, it's 
for good things too. The birth of a child. You know, I don't know why they call it labor. It's labor after they come home. <laughs> Right. We, we all know. We know that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's the meditation element of it, where you sit quietly and you're just with yourself, and so then you go into the center of yourself so that you can be a pillar for someone else. And sometimes in the meditation, you know, you you the the communing with the higher the the higher power, whatever it may be, because there are different. The energy keepers is non-denominational, and that's the other element that I truly, uh, I found a lot of uh, com uh, comparison with the White Light Express also, my ministry, because non-denominational, there, there is no set prayer or words. There, there is no set ritual or way of meditation. You can be a Muslim, a Jew, a Mormon, a Catholic, a, a, a Sikh, a Buddhist. And, and there is, there's, there's no set way, whatever it is and however it is that you commune with your higher, your higher power or what I call the great big is and ever was is perfect. So you're saying that the energy keepers, rather than, you know, being a minister or priest, rabbi, Rinpoche, whatever, um, the energy keepers sort of, I would say, reflect the energy of the labyrinth. You know, in, in that day, it's non-denominational. It's it's open to anyone, um, and 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 it's it's a container, so that where you will receive prayers, healing, uh, and and a and a space. It sounds to me like what you're saying is that it's a, a, a the energy keepers provide a space for you to. Um, process without feeling you know uh, um let it adrift without feeling adrift how's that that's great and that is an excellent excellent way of putting it mm. and, and i also believe it as a conduit too mm. first I, I i look at these these sacred spirals and 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 the labyrinth itself because there are many different kinds of labyrinths Especially now, and 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 you know, there's there's one person who will walk who will walk in medieval labyrinth versus the classical labyrinth versus, you know, a very specific labyrinth that they themselves have created through their own vision, and and yet like tree roots, they're all connected, and so as as I walk this labyrinth in my backyard, I'm connecting with Toby Evans' giant labyrinth out in out in the desert, and not just because she's a, a um. A, a, the first energy keeper either, but I connect with the sharks and the, you know, you and I both have it on our bucket list where we want to walk the, that giant labyrinth in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, <laughs> we're, we're all the labyrinths are connected. And I like to think that we can walk these labyrinths and pick up these, this, uh, they're like conduits mm -hmm. of, of, of lines and, and and elements of of connection throughout throughout the, the globe mm. so it so I, I i know that that the energy keepers have been uh, are active personally um and as a group and i'm you're saying conduits because because uh, have you had experience with energy keepers where they said you know are they where I mean, so what is the process? Let's first get to that. So if somebody sends a request in, um, I mean, you don't have to say the, tell the particulars, but how do you then inform the other energy keepers and what happens? Well, I, I will forward it to the, the, I'll take the statement. Let's, let's use you for an example. Okay. Uh, we're going to use you, Gotham. Yeah. I did. So I you did request the energy keeper help just recently. Yeah. Exactly. And so you and I talked about how that would go down, which is a little bit different because typically I will get an email. Uh, I will, no, not typically. I will get an email and then I will simply copy and paste that email into the messenger system that we have. Uh, for the Labyrinth Society, and I, I I like to add a picture 
I like to add a picture and a statement and kind of, I also share new, news with uh, what's happening with the Labyrinth Society because a lot of, um, well, not a lot, but many of the energy keepers are not actual members of the Labyrinth Society. They simply wanted, they've heard about energy keepers or, or perhaps uh, they, they found uh, the labyrinth, went to the website, and they're most interested in energy work. And so as, as they become acquainted with the Labyrinth Society through energy keepers, then they can join because they also get the news. Now, I have been an energy keeper since I joined the Labyrinth Society back in 2011. And I... The, the odd thing was is that I don't remember getting a lot of emails in the past, <laughs> mm. <laughs> but I, you can, you can please some of the people some of the time, but not all of the people all of the time. Mm -hmm. And during this, uh, as we were getting ready for World Labyrinth Day, um, and you know we have now this this element of this pandemic. I, it was the first time I actually, for, I did not see an energy request mm -hmm. and it just broke my heart. Mm -hmm. It really did. And then, you know, following through with that, which is another reason why I'm moving away from, from this position and moving into something else, because I felt also that it would be more appropriate for somebody to, uh, you didn't perhaps have so much going on. I, I do. Mm. I've got, I've got so many, I've, I have Viking stoves all over my kitchen with fat burners. <laughs> and I just thought to myself, <laughs> it's important to get somebody uh, in this role who can just really dedicate a lot of time and energy to it appropriately. Mm. It deserves that. Mm. You know, sometimes I, I, Again, I can't assume that everybody operates the way I do. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that it's, uh, it's very, very important for people to get timely updates. Even in, in, in Toby said when I spoke with her um, at this last uh, gathering that we had at Pearlstone, what was it the one before? I think it's Pearlstone. Well, she was at Rikerstown. Riker Riker okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. She was uh, saying that it was it was funny because it was the very first uh, uh, gathering board meeting that they had that this happened, mm -hmm. Christiana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And it actually started. Um, it was almost it was it was kind of a they just they had twelve points and everybody uh, broke and they left and to for a break for this this first uh, board meeting, and they had written a thirteenth. Uh, board rule, which was energy keeper. <laughs> mm. So she said that the difference between when it first began and how it's going now is a, a, getting people to move into a space where social media mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of it has to do too with the the what was it we were talking about the other day where I said it was difficult for me to get my mother to use her debit card for the first time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Moving into <laughs> finding a new browser, uh, new, new ways of connecting. Mm -hmm. I think this pandemic has made it a little bit more, um, actually, oddly enough, easier for us mm -hmm. because we, when the grandparents and people couldn't connect, they were sort of thrown into it where they were like, you know, heck, I'm going to figure this out no matter what, because I want to talk to my grandkids. Hmm. So it's, yeah. a, it's for us as opposed to against us, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, I, 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 I think that, you know, it's either a do or die situation. Either you connect this way or you don't talk to your, your fan. You don't see them. You don't see their faces. So it's like, I have to learn this. I have to figure out how to at least do FaceTime or, or, you know, Zoom or something. So, so I can see my grandkids or my, my kids or my family or whatever, or my, you know, my siblings. 
from my friends. So I think it's a, it has, it has provided that impetus, but um, I wanted to go back to, um, you know, you talked about the Labyrinth Society and the energy keepers in it and the start of it uh, with Toby. Um, but recently, it, and I've forgotten which gathering it was, was it the the Chicago gathering where you first started the something that had not been done before? And the energy keepers uh, came up with this idea uh, for the room and that the and I'll let you talk about it. What did, what did they do? And it was very well received, I think, right? Oh, I sure agree. It's, it's uh, one of those things that I'm really glad that I can look back on in the years to come. Uh, Sandra Walden came up to me at Bainbridge and she said, we really need to have a space because she had, she had tried meditating at some point. Mm -hmm. um, and, and she said, could, is it possible that you could maybe uh, create a space for those who just want to meditate and they'll be left alone <laughs> mm -hmm. as opposed to just finding a beautiful space outside or or because it was just it was just a, a space dedicated i was all over that i've been thinking about that too but we it, it's one thing to have a reception because the energy keepers and a lot of the groups have their own receptions and what have you but to have a specific place it, it you know, I mean, it, it was like, why hasn't this been done already? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it was Tracy McMerritt and God, I love her too. Mm. Um, yeah, she, she's got something going on too. Expect an energy request to come through today. Uh, <laughs> and what, what's, what was the name? What's the name of the space? What was the name of it that you called it? Reflection Sanctuary. Reflection yeah, Sanctuary. We, 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 Yes, reflection sanctuary. And, you know, I, I uh, think I think I'm going to just say I'm jumping in here. I think that people were so used to visual seeing the labyrinth itself as a place of reflection and and meditation and content that they didn't really. Um, uh, it, I mean, it took a while for people to to think. You know, we actually do need a space that is separate from the labyrinth that is that where ritual and ceremony is creates the space and so it's a sacred space where people can go for a time out and just you know five minutes ten minutes whatever just when they need it and i and i think so what has been the response um from people to these because you did you did it in you did it in chicago that was the first one was that the first one yes that was the first one and then and, and yeah. And then in and the next one was in Maryland. Pearlstone. Pearlstone. Um Correct. Yeah. And so you're gonna to continue to do these. When, oh, whenever I, we have an in person one next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a, a separate room for that on the uh I think uh, the TLS page on Facebook having a room for energy keepers is going to be excellent too. And I can also create one uh, at, at the page that we have. The, the Energy Keepers does have their own separate Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Again, because not all Energy Keepers are members of the Labyrinth Society. Mm -hmm. We do call it the Labyrinth Society Energy Keepers, but it's simply because it's sanctioned by and brought forward from uh, the Labyrinth Society, but you again, you don't have to be a member. Mm -hmm. um, you find though that many members uh, or many energy keepers do become members. However, uh, with regard to it being received, it's just across the board. Mm -hmm. Across the board, everyone has just really enjoyed it, and it is a pleasure and an honor to create and hold that sacred space. Mm -hmm. um, it is it is one of the things that we have learned uh over the past couple of years is we, it's not a place to go in and get a massage either <laughs> a lot of people go in they can sit there and get reiki and and so we we kind of had to to create a couple of rules because mm -hmm. you know being presumptive and just thinking that people are always going to do what we would do <laughs> again mm -hmm. not a good idea mm -hmm. so having Put up a couple of guidelines was a little uncomfortable 
because we didn't want to exclude anyone and we didn't want anyone to feel scolded either. It's like, you know, no, you're not supposed to do that. So <laughs> it's, it's just, <laughs> so this is a place for people to go. And uh, Tracy McNair created this really sweet little labyrinth of this last time uh, for people to kind of like walk. It was a 10 foot by 10 foot. And then we, and we have a little, uh, it's a kind of little cabana. It's a, kind of a, a Bedouin tent sort of thing. Mm. Uh, so that inside and an outside. And so we have the chairs around. It's very quiet, very peaceful. Uh, we tend not to have music in there, but we do have chimes or, or singing bowls so people can clear the space out. And I think that what Sandra was planning on doing and what we were planning on doing was perhaps creating a, a, a couple, like three or four uh, times in the next gathering that we have uh, physically, uh, where we can come in and have guided meditations. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then they would be posted, you mm -hmm. know, one o'clock guided meditation for 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. We come back four o'clock guided meditation because there are a lot of things going on at gatherings. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things going on and not everybody can do everything all at once. I know I want to go to all the workshops all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, that's great. I think that I think it. Uh, I I went in in there a couple of times. Um, not at Pearlstone for some reason. I remember going in there. Well, I did pop in a couple of times, but it was just very. It was just a really nice break. Like immediately when you step over the threshold, you're in another world. You're in this quiet sanctuary. You can take a deep breath. You can sort of unclutter your mind because your mind gets really cluttered or bombarded with so much because so much is going on at gatherings, in-person gatherings. So um, it was, I'm very glad that, that you guys uh, started this and, and I, I'm looking forward to them. I think it's going to be a regular fixture and I'm, uh, I, you know, I don't know if it, it makes sense to have um, a, you know, a little book open with, for comments, but it would be nice to, uh, to, you know, if people wanted to leave something like we at the Trinity Episcopal um, Cathedral in, in Portland, when I was in the guild there at the Labyrinth Guild there, we always had a book that people could write in because, you know, the, the ex Labyrinth experiences are so precious and, 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 Oftentimes they're so similar in nature because of the way the labyrinth operates and why we come to the labyrinth in the first place. Um, and so it's, it was just really wonderful to read the comments from people who, and you don't even, you might, you might say hi, but it was a quiet space. So there really was no talking except in the outer area um, outside of the, of the, where the labyrinth was, um, the room where the labyrinth is. Um, but it was so you, you you weren't it wasn't set up to talk to other people. So it was really nice to have those comments and 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 um, it, it was sort of it, for the it was a give back to the energy keepers because we always had facilitators there holding space. And so for us, it was, you know, us holding space. It was a give and take. And it was nice to see that. So I don't know if that's a, a possibility or even anything that you'd be interested in. Oh, doing. it's already been done. I'm taking notes right now. I'm like, <laughs> Mark, why didn't you do that? Yeah. yeah it's just, but yeah. I think it also, too, because we weren't sure it was going to continue on. Mm. But the board agreed to, you know, make it a, a permanent fixture at gatherings. Yeah. And so I... Yeah, and I think we'll start with a virtual guest book for our virtual gathering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that that would be a really great way to start. That's a and, good idea. Uh, yeah, we have the, our, thank you. Well, you have an excellent idea too. <laughs> was your, just evolving. Right? Yeah, Evolve. yeah. <laughs> that's what we do on the board. We just, we, we, it's a process. We just go, we dip from one person to another to another. And the, the, the idea evolves. That's, that's, uh, that's how it works. That's how labyrinths work, you know, really. I mean, you know, it's just, we're just following the path and the process. So, um, and I'm just grateful to be able to stay on the board. 
and and you know move sideways in a role that I think is going to be uh, more efficient and better for everyone. Yeah. Because I I just again I, being the energy keeper chair is is not something that anyone should take lightly in any yeah. way shape or form. Yeah, it is a different kind of space. Um, it is even even in board meetings, and it's a, it's a way uh, occasionally uh, because most the energy keepers are not rhinos. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know? yeah. It's it's important to to really follow the flow of energy yeah. because I know one of your questions was regarding when people are feeling a little off kilter yeah. or or even powerless. And 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 these are really common feelings that people are having now during the pandemic too. Yeah, yeah. It's like where, what do we what do we do and where do we go? And I wanting to reach out in in one way or another to the energy keepers and just to invite them to to gather. I think is is also going to be a really important part of this next phase as we recover. And then, you know, it's, it, we went from pandemic to riot. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's one of my favorite memes right now is this guy going in one direction. This is me going out after curfew because now it's been lifted from the virus. You know, this is me going back home because curfew is now put back on because of rioting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's this element that is really important right now of let us hold space. Mm-hmm. My husband, is is danish and his family home is in it's a it actually has a name it's called Tofte. and one of his uh his auntie ula uh, she said when you come to Tofte, you leave everything alone it is it is not a place to to, to fight or argue it's it's a place where you can sit and see where you you get to just uh, basically sit down relax and and create a sacred space to create that sanctuary and i think we need that more and more we really do i think part of the problem in society today and where we've gone and is that we don't have a safe space to step in and be accountable for anything without shame or embarrassment Mm -hmm. and part of being an energy keeper is is also understanding that we get to hold people up uh, in in their darkest and in their brightest moments. There, there is a lot of grief out there. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of grief that has a lot to do with pent up fear from a pandemic, and then I think that's one of the reasons why these riots have become so uh, just really blown out because there is no safe space. Yeah. So if we continue to be that change to show people that there are places where people can go i mean really where is where is it safe now yeah where is it safe yeah i hear you um and and so so have you so what has the response been has there there been more people asking for energy keeper assistance or you have seen a lessening or, you know, I mean, I think it's people are at different stages. Each, everybody's in a different stage, but, but what have you seen in terms of, of the need for an energy keeper intervention (laughs) or help, you know, support? Well, again, because social media has become so prevalent for a lot of people, other people have other groups that they belong to now as opposed to just the energy keeper as it was 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of prayer groups. There are a lot of different ways of doing it. There's a lot of work. I'm actually, though, interestingly enough, I get more requests for members. People are more interested in becoming an energy keeper mm-hmm. than I'm getting requests for uh, energy keepers to focus on. Hmm. And so I also have, and this is just my personal opinion, but every day uh, I have my alarm set for one. And and I, my husband and I, I'm pretty wild, I, I wanna say religiously, but that's it. <laughs> We've been really dedicated to walking our labyrinth either outside 
or inside by our grotto um, at one, where we walk as one at one. We'll walk either use a finger labyrinth or we'll walk our labyrinth. I truly believe, because I feel it in sense it in, in my center as well, the center of my own energetic often, that it has become so ingrained in many any energy keepers that they're actually doing it without uh, really, it's, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a way of, well, okay, Muslims, they pray, you know, they, they take it, what, four times a day? They, they, they'll take a moment uh, to, to look to the West, or is it the East? I'm sorry, I'm probably screwing that up. But we, I think we do that, and I think we've been doing it for 20 years. I think the energy keepers have been doing it for so long that though, that th there is a connection there. I feel a wave of energy that is a dedicated energy for everyone who is requesting, even mentally and emotionally, maybe not physically, but with their hearts and their minds to be connected to that center. And I think it has become more of such a virtual nut than they actually realize. And I wanted to address that. I wanted to say, it's not that we're not getting requests. I feel them. I feel them in my heart. So when I take that time out at one o'clock every day, to go light a candle. I'll focus on everyone who, who it's it sort of, it is, it's, it's that labyrinth, that walk that I do in my mind, where everyone that I meet on the path. And that's, it's, I start with my, my home, my family, and I exponentially move it out to, to the colony that I live in, and then to my community, and then you know, it's just, an, it's an expansive wave of energy, like a drop of water. So that ripple effect goes out. And I believe what is happening is that people are feeling comforted and assisted. It's walking into a room and flipping that light switch. They don't think about the electricity, you know, how, how does that light bulb work? It just, <laughs> you walk in the room and flip it on. Mm. Boom, light. And that's what we've done. I think we've actually managed to get to that point where it's it's uh it's just happening organically now mm. but i still want people to, to to send in because we do we get about uh i'm gonna say four or five requests uh each month from the energy keepers mm. and that's that's an average mm. you know there have been months there have been recently but sometimes we'll we'll get six or seven but i would say we get one member one new member a month so how many energy keepers are there now? There are 201. Wow. And uh, actually I get, I send out through our mailing system because some of them bounce back. We have 169. Hmm. So, how do, so, so how do the energy keepers, so this is like um, how do the healers heal themselves? So how do the energy keepers hold space for themselves? Uh, when they're dealing with all these challenges within the pandemic and the riots, especially when you're living in it. I mean, do you have to be remind them to, hey, you know, we're here for each other, too. We're here for each other, too. Um, uh, or do you get messages or posts or emails or anything like that? All of the above. Yes. Okay. All of the above. And um, reaching out is a Oddly enough, sometimes I get, I get a, a, it's almost as though when I reach out, sometimes I get slapped. It's like a rubber band effect. It's like, <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm getting pretty good at that too, though. Mm. Some people, they, they are, they don't like the change. They don't like that there's a Facebook page. Mm. They don't like that there's, a, there's always going to be that person or, or people who are really, they're pushing back against the flow of what's happening uh, with regard to social media mm -hmm. and, and connect that way. Mm -hmm. uh, I had one gentleman a few months ago send me a very angry letter and he said, you know, we used to send, we used to send handwritten letters to one another. Mm -hmm. What happened to that? Why can't we do that anymore? Mm -hmm. We used to be the flow of now, each energy keeper is different too. 
Mm. Okay. And there's, there's also that I am, I, I ran it and I will continue to the way that I see and feel in my heart is most appropriate. Mm. And I don't, if, if I don't get follow back or follow through or feedback, I'm not going, unless I am, I am prompted by spirit or, uh, I don't follow, I don't reach out and say, how are you, you know, did, did for example, Christiana, I, <laughs> I get to speak with you, but I don't reach out to people when I don't hear anything back mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of reasons, unless again, like I said, I'm prompted to, because uh, grief is a very personal thing. Mm -hmm. And occasionally what happens is people, People don't want to be inundated. Uh, and, and so asking now, asking, and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be very delicate about this, but a lot of people just don't have the time or the energy in this day and age to answer every email they get or every, the phone is ringing off the hook. You know, hey, I just heard that you, know, you had your head amputated. Are you okay? You know, <laughs> mm, mm, mm. like the most ridiculous thing because I don't want anybody to become offended. But the thing is, you know, is it you? You're kind of darned if you do and darned if you don't. Yeah, you're walking but, a fine line. It's a it's a tight exactly. rope. Yeah. When I first began, I I did that. I was like, do did you know? I I would put uh, everybody's email in there or their phone number and then. The, the vast majority of people were like, could you please not do that? I don't want to be inundated. Mm. Like, oh, sure, no problem. Mm. And then people would say, how come I'm not you know, getting emails or messages from the other energy keepers? I used to get that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when, when you're the chair, it's a, it's a fine, it, it is. It's a, it's a, there is a flow to it. There's definitely, you know, you're sometimes you're up on the crest and sometimes you're down in the, in the bottom of the wave so yeah um yeah it is. yeah so so how do you so but i still think that people i mean i i know for myself that that i am be uh, and everybody else is the same we're being bombarded with all of these virtual opportunities to connect and I have found that I real I'm very very selective. I read over what what it is. I read all the the blurb whatever it is about it, and then uh, and I get an instant reaction. You know, it's either a oh yeah that feels good. You know, I feel spaciousness. There's feel there's a feel of positive, or it's like nah, that's not for me right now. Just not for me. Right. So, um, but I think that that in terms of the energy keepers, I mean, if this has been, it's been a while since we have mentioned energy keepers and what they do in, um, in our regular bulletins or e-news and stuff like that. And that was one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the podcast um, to talk about this because the energy keepers, I mean, people, and the other part, part of this is I think is that a lot of people, they, you know, it's sort of like, well, by the time I send, even if, if I just send an email to somebody asking for help, it's I'm over it or it's, I'm in another place or I'm, I'm, you know, it goes, it's that quick and how is it going to serve me? So I think, um, I think for a lot of people there the, is the understanding of what the energy keepers provide is important and that it is, it is, it is a st sustaining, uh, healing energy, a, a, a place to hold space for, for whatever you're going through. And it doesn't stop just because the situation has alleviated or, or changed in some way, you know, it's, it's, it, there's a, 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 a continuation to it because you I mean 200 and some odd that's a lot of energy keepers that's a lot of people holding space um you know from my perspective I mean it's certainly not 200,000 but um you know the way energy works uh, it's certainly a, a good amount of people 
and you have you have men and women doing this i mean it's a fairly across the board more women than men or oddly enough i think the I, when i when i look at the names and i see i we have a very good mix which is odd because I, I know that uh, one of our, our board members, Frank Fain, is, is working on creating uh, more interest for the men uh, in general uh, to, to, to peak interest for the, uh, to bring more men in, into the Labyrinth Society because, but the, you know, the Labyrinth is, itself is a very divine feminine sort of element too, the way it flows. And, and so I, I think just naturally that flow and that grace in it is is appealing. So I think a lot of men, uh, unless they're very confident with their own divine feminine, they tend to be a little, uh, who knows? I don't know, I'm not gonna speak to them, but we do have a very good, I think, uh, balance between male and female energy. Oh, that's great. But with regard to choosing uh, th that power, one of the things that I, ch I, I champion is that the universe is intelligent and time is not linear. And one of the things that I, I do, if I do anything, it's for people to understand that just the act of reaching out, because the universe does expect to see your work. One of the things that I feel very uh, strongly about with my own ministry is that it's in the asking that you receive. Whether, I mean, to, to think of, of, of sending out a, a, an email or a letter, a handwritten letter that never arrives. That energy goes out somewhere. The, the glass is not half empty or half full, it's refillable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, the well is always there. Yeah. The well is always there. And uh, you know, when people get angry because maybe I haven't sent it out right away uh, because it, you know it's, it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon where they are and and midnight where I am, I'm not going to get it for about eight hours. I'm going to, you know, sit down in front of my computer in the morning and go, okay, you know, and, and I've, I've had a couple of people say, I did not, you know, you didn't send it out in time. And I'm not speaking of uh, what happened recently when I, um, it literally fell through my email filter because here I thought I was being so efficient and setting up filters, you know, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 but, uh, just in the asking it's in the asking it's in the reaching out it's 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 if you if you can't ask an energy keeper or a friend ask the great big is and ever was mm -hmm. ask to that higher place mm -hmm. that energy that i call it the interstellar esp channel mm -hmm. you know just the reaching out and 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 just taking even it's like taking a piece of cloud and and holding on to it knowing that it's divine and sacred it's yours everybody has it it's not just the energy keepers it belongs to everybody and it's out there we're just better at holding it and bringing it in that's all well we only had, we had two people on i'm going to just switch now we're almost through here but we had two people on one renee just left so hopefully she got her her question answered if she had a question uh peter's on uh, peter do you want you don't have to you don't have to unmute yourself if you don't want to but if you want to ask a question I think this is um, Sarah's husband. <laughs> so you probably know her well enough not to have to ask questions. But in case you do, you're welcome to unmute yourself and, and talk or, or share or whatever you'd like to. He's probably not. He's kind of a shy guy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, the other the other person took off. So, um, I, so I'm going to ask one more question here. So, how do you see the energy keepers' role evolving as we travel this decade? And if so, you know, I know not that you you see 360 degrees. Um, I don't think you're a bodhisattva at this point, but um, um, but um, not but, my path. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what? How do you see it evolving? I mean, what do you? what do you see it becoming or or you know in terms i mean we're in the aquarian age now so it's all about technology and waves and energy waves and light waves and sound waves etc so do you have any thoughts about that well i it, in a way i believe that it is going to be the element of compassion 
I think these that the, I see the energy keepers becoming more of the missionaries of compassion mm. and, and showing how to bring light where there is no light mm. and compassionate because that I think that is, the, is where I see it going and how I see it being handed off, especially to the next person who, who's stepping up. This is an incredibly compassionate person who is who is a missionary and who has a very defined statement and her being about how to bring light forward. And and it's 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 elegant and beautiful. So yeah. Hmm. I, I I what I see happening is is a, I know we already have the, the wisdom keepers. But I think more of the uh, the energy keepers uh, stepping into to the role of bringing in compassion. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where I see it happening. Yeah, I think I think that that I think that the process that and I, I you know I would assume I mean because I, I certainly it's been true for me that I that the, uh, the, the idea of compassion or the place of compassion you reach once you have gone through the process of forgiving, you know, forgiving yourselves, uh, forgiving, you know, your actions, yourself for your, the actions that you've, you, the choices that you made, et cetera, et cetera. So that, and, and, and that process provides you with a certain level of empathy which then to me then you know when you're working with energy you're working with your heart chakra you're opening your heart chakra it's sort of the next step is compassion you know that there is an uh, a way of looking at all life as sacred and valuable and 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 therefore um, um, worthy of unconditional love, you know. So to me, that's what compassion is, you know, having that, not pity, it's not the same. No, not at all. No. No, and, and it begins with the thought because, you know, our thoughts are energy. And as a, a, a Jungian, I tend to use a lot of symbols as well. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at, at the thought as energy, which is represented in the, in the tarot uh, or tarot, uh, <laughs> uh, it, but by the suit of swords, then we know that energy is, is translated into light that has been shaped by uh, compassion and consciousness. Mm -hmm. So moving forward from that, I, that is where I see it headed, that we become the missionaries. That in situations, I can see the energy keepers becoming uh, the the people who are supplying different elements of different uh, governments, the, the the medics and and the the um, even protesters with a with a way of of um, standing in their own in their in their consciousness with compassion and with reason well that's great thank you thank you thank you um i you know we could talk for you know we could continue talking um <laughs> uh because i you know for me it's it's i i will i i'm going to make this personal in that i remember yesterday one of the radio stations npr station was playing all of the protest songs from the 60s and the early 70s. And that was my era. You know, I graduated high school in 69. So, so um, you know, and for me, it's, it's just heartbreaking to see the same, it, 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 we haven't learned. It, and the stuff has to come up or we won't be able to do what we're supposed to do in the Aquarian age. But to see the same stuff happening as happened back then and the whole, you know, Kent State and the, the song about Ohio and, and the helicopter, you know, it's just, it's heartbreaking. It's really just heartbreaking to see um, that we were having to repeat 
these lessons again um, because it's been suppressed. That uh, the situation has been suppressed, and and it's not going to work anymore. And I'm I'm you know the the idea of compassion is really important because because you know when you see this when you've lived long enough to have grandchildren or grand people people who are grandchildren age in your family and to have gone through this once already and to think oh well this is just an aberration and it's not it's um it it's it, it's there's a tremendous it's heartbreaking i mean it it opens your heart it cracks your heart um and, and so like that's where the light comes through. And that's where we have to bring this power of positive focused intention, translating everything to its highest possible power. You're right, it didn't work. It didn't work. And 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 so now we get to look at it in this new age as, okay, what didn't work then? And why didn't it work? And what can we change with that now? And that is where the compassion comes through because I, I remember that too. I was I was a little girl, but I remember being terrorized throughout my entire childhood through the, the threat of nuclear war. And, you know, I was like, I finally just, I was one of those kids who just sat at the desk and got in trouble because I knew what nuclear war was. And I said, why are we getting under our desks? And I remember having to go to the principal's office because I went, you know, it doesn't make any difference. I'm, I'm going to die whether I'm sitting here or sitting under my desk. Mm. I'd rather be sitting here and not be afraid. <laughs> you know, that was me. So it is it is heartbreaking because it, that fear, that element of fear has got to be removed and and how and again, that's why I talk about we don't have safe space. We don't have a sacred space to step into and become accountable for the things that we have done without shame, without embarrassment so we can move through it. And that's what was suppressed. Mm -hmm. I believe that that's what was suppressed. And as we, as we, you know, it, maybe it is an excellent thing that we, this began with a pandemic that made us have to go within and look at our, our communities and our tribes mm -hmm. so that we could look at the families that were, I, I, you know, one of the things that happened to me when this began with the pandemic is I was really worried about the children mm -hmm. because I didn't get food mm -hmm. at home. At the time. I got food when I went to school. Mm -hmm. And so I began thinking of all of those kids now who are not going to eat because they had no way of getting food because their parents are drug addicts or alcoholics and or whatever their issue. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm just saying that, you know, it, it, we've got to fix what's happening in our own center. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with our own center? Mm -hmm. And then we get to move outward. And that's why the energy keepers is going to be incredibly important because they get to hold space for that center. We get to have that compassion without judgment. Well, this is great. I, I mean, I, we could talk more. I mean, because I, I know that a lot of people are, are very frightened to look inside and see the shadow aspects of themselves. And to have a yeah. safe container to do that, where they're not made wrong and they're loved no matter what, and they understand that they are lovable no matter what, because we're not meant to be perfect beings, and and but but a lot of people are really absolutely petrified to do that. Even now, even you know, I, you sort of expected that in in our parents' generation and grandparents' generation. But um, it's hard. It's a hard. If you've never done it before, you don't see the the brilliant light at the other end of the tunnel. And it is brilliant, and it is extraordinary but you have to tr you have to take that first step and you have to be willing to do the work and a lot of people um so having the energy keepers and having labyrinths as the as the anchor for the energy keepers is is having this safe space and the idea of a safe container where you're not judged and you're not heckled and you're not and that's the problem with the with social media is that it's it's the the shadow side of the social media is that heckling that constant you know where kids have died kids have committed suicide because of what they've experienced so yeah, and, and, an and interesting so clarity that, that that right there that right there is 
brilliant example. Thank you so much, Christiana, for that, because that is an example of energy. That right there, because people are like, oh, well, how can this affect us? It's just, you know, it's not real. No, it's very real. It's very real, but the thing then is these thoughts of, of that violence, that violence and, and these emotions that have hatred and, and jealousy and, and fear. Those are lower frequency vibrations and energy that is very real that causes people to, it's, it's easier to, to go within if you don't have that center to go within that, that allows you to have a loving thought or a higher frequency emotion so there so thank you for that because those are perfect yeah this is an excellent example of how holding energy in a social media platform can work or yeah yeah brilliant well okay all right well uh you, thank you sarah <laughs> we're, we're sort of out of time we're over over time i'm sorry that that other woman didn't stay on because i i i'm i'm just i'm just I'm just intending that whatever question she had, she got answered. Um, but if not, then please, by all means, um, send send Sarah an email, um, and um, or Sandra an email actually, because Sandra is now the uh, the energy keeper chair. And Sarah, I'm so glad, Sarah. This is for everybody's. Sarah is now part of the communications team, part of part of uh, of which I'm a, a part of. So this is it's wonderful. I'm so thrilled that you're joining us um, and your all of your wonderful experience will be put to good use so um, that's a that's a that's terrific uh, maybe even you'll 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 do some podcasts which oh, be, I, I, yeah yeah that. which would be fun <laughs> which would be fun so I thank you so thank you so much for sharing this hour with me and and with uh, with everyone and everyone who might listen and and uh, you know many continued blessings on your path and and we'll be we'll be talking regularly much meta <laughs> what does that mean what do you mean by that meta yeah meta is a it's a Buddhist statement for gratitude, much appreciation. Okay. Much gratitude for the time that has been spent. It's it's sort of one of those, it's a namaste folding uh, continuation of gratitude. M-E-T-T-A? M-E-T-T-A. Okay. Cool. Awareness much. and gratitude. Yeah. All right. I like it. I like it. Well, much meta back. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I'm looking forward to listening to this again and, and judging myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> unconditionally, with unconditional love and compassion. <laughs> Amen. Well, bye now. Thanks. Thanks, Sarah. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Labyrinth Society's Many Paths, Many Visions on GoToMeeting and broadcast by Spreaker with your host, Christiana Brinton. Be sure to check the TLS website, News Updates, What's New Area the Facebook page, the global group, and YouTube page for a list of upcoming dates and guests. Also, if this podcast has piqued your interest in the Labyrinth Society and you'd like more information about membership, please go to www.labyrinthsociety.org forward slash membership. Many blessings, stay well and secure, and may you find what you need on your path through life.